Hey everybody, all right. Uh, current cinema uh, snippet clip clip. I don't know what we're going to call this, but this is just like a brief. Hey, how you doing? Because this show still exists on the channel. Uh, we just, you know, don't have a lot of free time. One of the main reasons I didn't have a lot of free time, especially last weekend, uh, was I actually got to watch a lot of Sundance Film Festival movies from the seat uh, on my couch at home. It was awesome. Um, so those that might not know, Sundance has been around since like, I don't know, the 70s. It's been around for a long time, like 40-something years. And the main appeal of it, uh, at least starting out, was to like showcase indie movies and stuff. But what what it is now is like it's it's showing a lot of movies, mostly movies that nobody has seen. Uh, so we're talking like indie movies without a distributor. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is basically a showcase for indie movies uh, that allows them to uh, you know pursue distributors basically. And and I just wanted to showcase some of my favorite movies from that f festival basically. Please allow me to indulge however long this takes. It's not going to be like a full episode length or anything, obviously. It's just me, solo dolo. Um, but uh, yeah, Sundance this year, um, this is my third year doing it from home. I'm not going to Utah for to be told, hey, this show is sold out, so you're going to have to go home. That's just, I'm not going to do that, sorry. Uh, so uh, I think during covid they started doing, like in 2021, they started doing online-only uh, festival uh, for Sundance. And they did it again in 2022, and a lot of people were that regularly go, like press and stuff, were just like, what the, what the heck? You didn't need to do that. It's 2022, whatever. Uh, but that was my first year doing it, and I was able to fully participate. I got to vote. I got to, uh, on my favorites, I got to, like, rate all the movies that I saw and it actually mattered. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't just letterbox ratings that nobody reads. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that was really cool. And that kind of got me, that, that got me bit by the festival bug, I guess, at least in terms of like remote, uh, festival attending. Cause I don't, there is one in Dallas, but it's where I'm at. I'm not, I've done it before a couple times. I'd just rather stay home, man. I, I can't lie. Uh, it's, it's just not for me. Um, the whole grind. Um, especially when you already work a full-time job and it's like, I don't have it in me to go to three movies after work or whatever, however many it is. Um, but yeah, this year it was four days for people to watch movies online. The, the options are getting slimmer and slimmer every year, but it's still cool. It's whatever, baby. It's whatever. I'm still getting to watch movies that no, nobody else on the planet has seen yet for the first time. And that's cool. Um, and, uh, this year I got to watch 20 movies and six, six uh, specific ones jumped out as my favorites. Um, so I'm just gonna get into it. This is not gonna be fancy. This is gonna be low budget, low effort. All right. So, uh, this is like the letterbox, my rankings and all that stuff. Um, so the six are the ones I have to sing praises about here. Um, the first one, it's called, uh... Skywalker's a love story. I'm just going to go in order. Um, all right. So this one was actually bought by Netflix. So it'll probably be on Netflix this year sometime. Uh, especially because it's already done. So why wait, right? Um, but uh, yeah, this one's really cool. It's literally what it looks like. It's it's these two crazy freaking nut jobs. Uh, kind of doing what Alex uh, Honnold uh, did in uh, the movie Free Solo. Um, you know, but you know, instead of a cliffside, they're climbing buildings. They're breaking into buildings where they don't have permission to scale them, basically. And they are uh, finding ways to get to the top of them and take pictures and look hot doing it or whatever. Um, so it's from on a cinematic level, it's it's like, dude, th this is beautiful. Um, so uh, yeah, this one's really cool. Uh, and and it's it's dude it's gonna stress you out uh with some of the shots that they're doing and it starts uh they kind of do the whole flashback thing at the beginning of the movie where like it shows them in a confined space kind of hiding from a uh, construction crew or whatever and uh then it kind of tells the story of how they met and then it goes back to that moment and uh, it's it's really stressful like it's so unnecessarily you don't need to do any of this i don't understand the fascination with climbing things but it makes for good movies. I don't. 
I don't know, man. It makes for good, like, stressful thriller uh, movies. Um, so, yeah, that's the first one. Um, the next one is called In the Summers. A little bit harder to sell. I don't think anybody bought it uh, as a distributor yet. This is definitely more of an indie-flavored movie. Uh, yes, that is uh, the actress who played Supergirl in the Flash movie, which I liked, by the way. Whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, this one's just like... I don't know, man. It's hard to describe other than what you see as the premise here where it's kind of following these two girls uh they start very young and then you see the the movies like kind of broken up into like four or five parts and each part they're getting like three years older or a year older or whatever the time jump is but yeah at, by the end of it this is how old they are um the daughters um so uh two sisters um so yeah, the do the dad is like a you know a volatile person personality, uh, like it says here. Like he clearly loves them very much, but he's working through a lot of issues uh, mentally and stuff like that. I, I don't know. They just shot it in a way that's very engaging and hard to take your eyes away from. Um, believe me, I watched so many movies that I, I I genuinely it was really hard to put my phone down and focus for hours and hours at a time of just like five six movies a day. Um, so, uh, this one, when it does hook me, it, you know, it deserves to be commended. So that one is called In the Summers, I, to be released TBD. It says 2024, but that's not when the rest of the world is going to be able to see it, I don't think. Uh, the next one's called, uh, D, D, It's got that little accent, but I know it's like Chinese. I don't know. Um, but anyway, we're here, guys. We're here. Everybody that's a, a few years away from 40 like I am. We are at the point where we are doing late 2000s nostalgia. Like, we're here. It's time to make peace with it. Um, and this is during a time period where... That's the main character. This is during a time period where uh, AOL still existed. MySpace was definitely still a thing. Uh, and by AOL, I mean AIM, uh, Instant Messenger. Um, so it still had a lot of those little, like... Look, a lot of those memories it was pulling at, for sure, for me. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, this is uh, just, I mean, it's just a straightforward coming-of-age story about this this kid who um, is struggling to fit in, uh, doesn't really get along with his older sister. In fact, their jabs at each other some of the funniest stuff. If you remember that scene in Donnie Darko where uh, Jake and Maggie Gyllenhaal, real-life uh, siblings, are bickering at each other at the table, and, and, and Jake Gyllenhaal's like, why don't you suck an F or whatever? And, uh, or the sister says that, and he's like, I don't even know how somebody could do that. And, yeah, this movie is just, like, full of that type of interactions where it's really, really funny. Um, and the whole movie is kind of funny in itself. And if you've been, you know, a teenager in... I, I know this is not singular to me or this character. Um, but if you've been anybody struggling socially in middle school trying to find your people... Um, and, and that was certainly my worst time uh, of my life um, was middle school. I had, like, no people, quote-unquote. Um, this will definitely... Uh, you'll definitely be able to relate to this and you'll find a lot like a lot of it is almost too relatable um, but they find ways to keep it funny and stuff like that um, but yeah in order to fit in he starts to you know uh, learn how to skate but not just that but he, he, he learns how to how to film them uh, adequately uh, which is you know I think that's based on the life of the writer director Sean Wang um, but yeah it's dude it's really good. Uh, and this, I think, won an award or something like that at the festival. So did in the summers. I think Skywalker. I think all of these won an award. Whatever, dude. They just hand out awards like candy at these things. Anyway, the next one I wanted to mention is directed by Chiwetel Ejiofor, who also stars in it as the main character's dad. Um, it's it's called Rob Peace. It's it's a it's a true story based on a true story uh, about a about a kid who, I mean, pretty much devoted his whole life trying to prove his father's innocence uh you know his father's convicted for a murder very early on in his in his life and obviously you know put away for I don't, decades whatever the sentence is um and he's dedicated while being trying to be a consummate student and like just incredible incredibly smart and gifted and like get all these good grades and secure his future and all that stuff in the middle of doing all that he's trying to prove his his dad's uh, innocence uh, you know, through legal systems. And it does, you know, come those two kind of uh, goals of his, you know, of, do come in conflict quite a bit. So, I mean, it's not like 
it's not like I can sit here and tell you you've never seen this story before. I probably have. I don't know. But the main actor, Jay Will, I've never seen this dude before in my life. He is one of the most engaging new actors I've ever seen. Like, he's just so freaking charismatic. Um, and and it's just... It, that can seriously elevate a movie that is kind of being, you know... Sorry, Chiwetel. Directed at a uh, okay quality level. Like, it's, you know, it's fine. Uh, but, <laughs> but for the actors involved... And you know what? Camilla Cabello was in this, too. The pop singer, if you don't know. She didn't suck. I was very impressed, actually. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, and I love Michael Kelly in anything. I have an uncle that looks just like him. It's the bald guy from House of Cards. He plays, like, the clean, cleaner upper guy. Anyway... Uh, that's, we got two left here. Sun Coast is the next one. This is a movie that was already, I think it's already a Fox Searchlight, whatever they're calling themselves now. Searchlight Studios. Uh, it used to be Fox, Disney bought them. Anyway, it was already under that banner, so they have a distributor. It's Hulu. It's coming out early February. Unfortunately, for those of you with, with nostalgia for... You know, video stores in the 90s. This is not about Suncoast movie company, whatever the crap it was called. It's not about that media store that was in malls. Um, but it is about uh, uh, this 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 girl here, teenage girl, uh, Nico Parker, who is um, uh, Tandiwe Newton's daughter. And she also played Sarah, Joel's daughter, in The Last of Us. Um, very, very talented. Um, but it's about her, her, she has a brother who is, I mean, you can clearly see the synopsis here. I'm just trying to give you what I recall. Um, but, uh, as well, but she has a brother who is, has a brain cancer to the point where he can't see anymore. He's near end of life. So they move him into hospice care, but they happen to move him. And Laura Linney plays the mom, by the way, and she's great. Uh, and she puts, remember how much of a bitch Wendy Bird was in, uh, in Ozarks, basically that's, she takes a piece of that character for this role too. You're kind of like, man, you're awful. Um, but you kind of, even she doesn't really know what she's doing sometimes because how can you really comprehend losing a child like that, you know? Um, but they happen to put the brother in this hospice care that Terry Shivo is at. Remember Terry Shivo? Remember that case? The right to die case and all that stuff? Um... So they have, like, protesters outside the building the entire movie uh, while she's just, you know, while the mother and the daughter are constantly trying to make visits and stuff like that. And Woody Harrelson happens to be one of the protesters who's, like, uh, you know, protect Cherry Shivo's life and blah, blah, blah. The movie doesn't really take a stance one way or another. In fact, there's a, there's a key point in the movie where uh, Nico Parker's character, the person in the center poster, she's, she's kind of forced to speak in front of the class about what she feels about the Terry Schiavo case because she's kind of going through something similar and she basically just says you don't really know how to feel until you're the one going through it and I feel like that's the point the movie's trying to make and not so much take one stance over the other um but yeah this movie uh it's gonna make you cry it's it's yeah if you're somebody that cries at things this is gonna make you cry and it's really really good it's just really good uh, it's one of my favorites for sure. And speaking of crying, this uh, Norwegian movie called Eblen, Eblen, I believe it is, um, but it's about this uh, Norwegian gamer who, you know, he he was super young when he got into gaming, and it's because he had this muscular degenerative muscular problem. He, he was basically losing more and more capabilities uh, in terms of like mobility and stuff like that. He was basically just confined to a wheelchair, and all he had left to do was game. So the movie kind of starts out with like, you know, him being filmed gaming and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, and you know, from afar, his parents were just kind of like, I don't, we didn't know how to peel him away from that. It felt like he was robbing himself of a social life, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, and then he passes away, unfortunately, at uh, really, really young, 25, as it says here. And uh, this was secured by the Netflix, by the way, so it should be coming out maybe for the next award cycle next year. Um, but uh, after he passes away, there's a deluge of messages that he used to play World of, from people that used to play World of Warcraft with him. And uh, they, sorry, just got a text. Um, and they, <laughs> and they're just like, rest in peace. You know, we want to hold a vigil. We w tell us what we can do. They're like reaching out to the parents who posted a blog and 
gave their email address. Like, it's just hundreds of people. Like, this kid, he did have a life, and it was developed through the game. And this just emphasized the importance of... This is why I also love this movie, and it's also related to the current, you know, current-gen audience, I guess, as gamers. This is why I'll never understand when people are just like, uh, games, video games will rot your brain. I mean, it, obviously, that uh, element of that depends on the gamer. But, I mean... When you're playing community games like World of Warcraft, where you kind of have to make friends to be successful in a lot of what you're doing, just look at how it it changed this. It gave this kid a life. It gave him a life that he could not physically have outside of his home. Um, and uh, yeah, it just really you know kind of repainted his whole life when his parents found out about all this. Kind of repainted like everything that you know. Every time they caught him gaming, it was really like him. Um, hanging out with his friends uh, the way that he knew how and like and and what was really cool is that they were able to get the archives from World of Warcraft uh, of all of his chats and stuff like that recreate it in the movie the way that it happened uh, with you know professional voice actors and stuff uh, kind of imitating who they could and uh, man it's just really touching and uh, the tears will come in if you're again if if you are a cry if you're not a crier good for you you're made of stone congratulations brag about it uh but if you are dude this one's gonna come in waves for you gonna be like a beginning middle and it's just gonna be yeah uh it's fantastic though i had a really really good time watching movies uh the ones at the bottom here yeah no even this one right here with Kristen stewart and steven yun love both of them what were you doing with this movie it wasn't very good uh, the Greatest Night in Pop is on Netflix now. Go watch that if you have nostalgia for the We Are the World, that song and how it was made and all that stuff. It's just super interesting. Um, all those personalities in one room, which they tried to recreate for Haiti, I believe, years later, but it just it didn't hit the same, bro. Let's be real. Um, but anyway, so that in in a in a really 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 hopefully small enough nutshell was my Sundance 2024 experience. Um, and I will probably be doing a little bit more of these current cinema clip, clip it, snip. I was hoping it would come to me in the moment, but it didn't, what I was going to call these. But, um, I'll be back with another one of these about, uh, the Oscar, this year's Oscars. Uh, specifically, I, I want to watch more of the nominees, but I will come back, make my predictions with you guys in real time, uh, as to who will win this year. Uh, I tend to use a site called goldderby.com and I'll, I'll, you know, film myself making that and, uh, hope, I mean, I don't know if that's good content. I have no freaking idea what I'm doing here. Um, I don't know that any of us do when we start doing this, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is, uh, that's it, man. I love movies. What can I say? But, uh, yeah, if current cinema content does keep coming, stay tuned on Thursdays. It's always going to be coming out on Thursday mornings. All right. Uh, it's not going to be a regular weekly thing, but just... On Thursday, check your feeds and your YouTube feed. And if it's not there, I took a break. All right? <laughs> so thanks so much for, for watching. And if you wanted to follow me on Letterboxd, I'm right here. Jeffrey M.W. J.M.W. Songs. Um, right here. J.M.W. Songs. Jeffrey M.W. All right. So stay tuned for more stuff. I'll see you later.